Hello guys, I'm Peter from Build a Boeing. This video could be called Pedestal Mayhem. I did a separate video about this weather radar panel that's missing up here a few weeks ago. And in that video, I mentioned that my pedestal just things in here just escalated and it had something to do with days chaining. And so I've been uh, thinking the last few weeks uh, what this video should be about because I promised to make a video about it. And, well, one thing is just showing you the nightmare down here in wires. But then I came to the conclusion that what this actually should be about is open cockpits, master cards, and why there are so many wires connected uh, and needed when using open cockpits as your interface boards. The reason for all this mayhem is because I replaced this NAV radio with the USB version. This is open cockpits USB version. Uh, the rest of the panels here, I'll go through them later. But first, let me just show you the setup here in the abyss. So, down here we have a open cockpits expansion card right there. That black wire sticking up here, that's the USB cable for the computer. Over there is a there. Over there is an open cockpits. Uh, master card for the first officer's side and if we look over here you might just be able to see behind all these wires over there somewhere see if, i can't point with my fingers there you can see an open cockpit display card and there's actually one behind as well two display cards over there turning around to the captain's side you might just be able to spot a open cockpit master card here as well and that gray Plug down there is a parallel cable that runs to the expansion card. And over here behind this, you might not be able to see it due to all the wires, they're loose right now. But over here is one and two display cards for the cups inside. And as I mentioned, all this began because I replaced this uh, DIY NAV panel with the USB version from Open Cockpits up there. This DIY panel is from a company called ProSim Parts and it's just a regular two face plates and some knobs and you then build them uh, DIY style. In the back, these panels, I'm using printed circuit board here for the displays. And here you can see where my finger is, you can see five pins, one, two, three, four, five. And over there, there are eight pins, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is because there are five digits in the display, and these eight is for the seven segments and then one ground. And the same over here, where you have the active, the, sorry, standby, that's the standby frequency, as you can see, and this is the active frequency. These need to be connected to a display card, some sort of interface board. The way I normally do it is that I use a small ribbon cable and place it up here. So I placed a small ribbon cable up here and then from here a long ribbon cable that goes all the way to the uh, interface card. And this is the five wires, let's say for the standby frequency, so they come up here from the display and then from here five cables go to the interface card and the same up there. These eight, they can be shared, so I just have a small ribbon cable going across here and then this is from the active display, the standby display a small ribbon cable to connect them, and then from here, eight wires to the interface card. Down here, switches, cables for the switches, and these two over here is cables for the, the decimal, uh, the dot, and the brown and the red one there is for the backlighting of the panel. So that's how they're, they're built. Then let's take a look at open cockpits and the setup you need when using the master cards, because that explains all the wires down there. I've done a bit of drawing here, as you can see, here's my computer and there's a USB cable, the black one I showed you, and that runs into expansion card and here in the pedestal I have two master cards connected to this expansion card. Total I have three expansion cards in my cockpit, one in the pedestal, one in the main instrument panel and one in the overhead. And they all have master cards connected. Down here in the pedestal two master cards, first officer side, and so that two display cards connected and that these two together handles these uh, radios, comms, nav and ADF on the first officer side and the transponder. They're not connected to that 
card itself. They're connected to both cards. But we'll just leave that. Now we're just focusing on the captain side. Master card for the captain side, and here the ribbon cable that goes to a display card, and here the ribbon cable continues to another display card. Each of these display cards has eight pins here on one side. These eight pins is for the seven segments that I showed you before and the grounding. And then 16 up here for digits. So you can connect 16 digits to each of these cards. And so let's look at the radios up here. Here we have the NAV radio, the comms radio and the ADF radio. And these red numbers up here is the number of digits that is in each radio, five for the active, five for the display. In the comms you have six and six, and in the ADF you have five and five. So let's do the math or start wiring these. For the NAV panel, I need to connect these two groups. See if the Sharpie works, almost. I need to connect them with a the cable, the two, the, the eight pins that's connected together. And then I need to connect one of these down here to this group. Okay. Then I need to connect the five digits. That's the five digits here. They need to be connected with five wires down here to this group. And these five wires, uh, the five digits here also need to be connected here to five pins there. Now we are able to get the uh, this place we uh, get them to work so that's five and five and eight that's a total of 18 wires just write that here 18 wires plus the tendered the eight here but that's inside the panel then furthermore the nav panel has a dual uh, encoder here with four, four wires a transfer and a test button that's five that's six and a ground that's a total of seven wires here, seven wires that needs to go down to the master card. The Sharpie isn't very good, but that goes down here for a group of seven wires. The ADF over here is the same. Dual transponder, two switches and a transfer knob. That's four, five, six, seven. That's eight with the ground. Eight wires and these eight wires, they should be connected down here to the master card. Then we have the displays, it's the same story. These two, we're gonna connect them internally with the eight, uh, the eight pin. And then we have five wires, we'll do that with the red one. No, so the eight here, of course, need to be connected to the display card over here. And then the five wires here needs to be connected to this part. And the five wires here must be also connected here. So that again is a total of five, five and eight. That's 18 wires. Then for the ADF panel, we actually also have some LEDs. The four LEDs, two here and two here and a ground. That's five wires as well. And these five wires needs to be connected down here on the master card to the output side. Then there's the communications radio, and this is where I started daisy chaining things, because this display card contains 16 digits, can handle 16 digits. Up here we have five and five, so that's the first 10. 16 minus 10, that's six. Well, would you look at this? Six digits there, so I can connect these six down here. But I cannot connect the next six because now this is full. But I have six left here and of course then I'll connect these six over here. So far so good. Then we have that ribbon cable with the eight. Now I could take the eight and connect them down here but what I've done is I've actually daisy chained it to the calm, uh, the calm and the nav panel and over here, the comms panel and the ADF panel. So now we're talking eight and six, that's 14 wires and 14 wires. This is a total of 24 wires, just for the digits going out of this panel. Then we have 
the dual encoder, these two, and the ground connection, and that of course goes into the panel, the master card down here. That's an additional seven uh, wires. So you can see the amount of wires now is slowly adding up. And this is the daisy chaining I did. But let me just get back to that in a few seconds. If we just uh, do the math here, this is 25 wires. This is 35 wires. No, wait. That's not 24. That's 8 and 6. That's 14. That's 14. This is 28. There we are. That makes it 35. I did the calculations beforehand. I think just adding, didn't add up now. That's 35. And now we're here. 8 and 8 and 5. That adds up to 31 wires. So if we put these numbers together, and this is, this is where I can explain the mayhem I've always had and the spaghetti land in my pedestal. If we add these numbers together, we add, end up with a whopping 91 wires needed just to connect these three panels. You could do with eight less if you have an additional display card here. So you have one display card for each panel. Then you could do with less, at least you could get one of these eight pins out of the way. But 91 wires required just for three panels. And in that setup and that mess, that kind of explains why things are looking as they are down here. So the daisy chaining that I mentioned to begin with, that caused all the mayhem down here was because I removed this panel, which means this had to be rewired down here. But all of a sudden, these wires were gone as well. This one as well. Taking that eight pin down here, that's the easy part. But now that I had available slots, I might as well just take these wires and take them down there as well so they are connected to one card, which again means this had to go and these had to go and be rewired over there. And that caused all the mayhem because now everything more or less were out on the captain's side. And that was just escalated very quickly. So if you want to keep the complexity low, I recommend going with the USB versions. There you just need one wire, one panel, one wire. Whereas with this panel, the old navigation panel that I showed you, I need 25 wires sticking out of it. And that explains why this was pedestal mayhem. So within the next few years, I am planning on replacing most of these panels with USB versions as much as possible. I can tell you the, a, um, the audio selector panel I've done here has a internal, uh, internal uh, interface board which means that I'm actually just connecting a network cable to it and that interfaces it. That's it, network cable and then some uh, backlighting here. So in order to keep things in complexity low, you need to go with USB versions. If you're DIYing, as I have been for the past many years, well, you're gonna end up with something like this. That kind of explains it. I'm Peter from Bilderberg. You guys take care, bye-bye.